some of your personal heroes. Now, this is rapid fire. So, uh, Carl, personal heroes. Barack Obama. James Baldwin. Um, man, it's, it's difficult because I, I feel like I'm so um, you have to only have to name one. My father, um, my mother, um, and my late wife. That's beautiful. And I know, Carl, and, you know, we all said it. I mean, it's, you know, on this show, it helps so many people because so many people write in to me and talk. We talk about loss. We talk about, you know, uh, adversity and anxiety and depression, and everybody deals with it. And, you know, I I think this show tries to normalize that. And, you know, my heart always, it it just, it it just sank when I heard about your, and it's been, I think, 10 years now. And how do you, just briefly, I know you don't get personal and we can cut it if you want, but how do you how do you move on? What do you do to um, continue on? Because I'm sure it felt like this bottomless pit, this place where you're like, I don't, you know. And and what what helps? What what do you do? Well, you go to the bottom because that's real. Or I mean, I went to my bottom, and then um, it, in the bottom, I remembered that connection. The reason I say she was my hero was because she lived with a lot of illness for a long time in her life, but there was no way you would know it. Um, And so that became a beacon to get me back. Um, And and one of the things that happens is that initially, all you can think of is that loss. It takes up all of the space in your being and you forget that you only feel the size of the loss because the magnitude of the joy was that much greater. And as that begins to flood back in, um, literally uh, the loss is carried downstream and you're left with this beautiful river of memory of of what what you still have with you. Carl, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just on the verge of tears right now. And I'm honestly calling you. Every time I experience loss, I'm calling Carl Lumley. <laughs> you're you're going to help me through life, Carl. You're I'm going to call you. see some of your posts, Michael, about you yeah. know, your, some, your grandmother or your aunt. And, you know, it just, it's, um, they're so dear. It's such a different side of you, which I, I don't know. And so reading your posts, it's like I've gotten to know you a little bit better through them. And they're so heartfelt and vulnerable. Vulnerable. I mean, so, they just broke my heart. But in a... A wonderful way. Thank you. Yeah. You know, I I think that what I've learned is, you know, you try to while they're here, you know, tell them how much you love them, and obviously it's never enough. You're like, I could have done this, I could have said that. That's just something that I think everyone does. But you know, I start thinking about you know my uncle, who's an amazing man, and I'm like, you know, I, I'm thinking about him. Why don't I just post how I feel about my uncle, how great he is, and I do it, and or I post about someone I love or I admire or. Uh, I, I try to do things now before that, just so they know how much I love them, just because I know how, how emotional I am and how devastated I'll be. So I'm trying to protect myself, but also, you know, uh, speak the truth, especially my friend, Grant Imahara, who, you know, was such an amazing man. He 49 years old, brain aneurysm gone. He was a, a USC grad. He made robots. He, uh, I was on Mythbusters. He, but he was the most down to earth, fun loving, gentle soul, and it just stays with me because it's you know you it, it's he's he's my age, he's our age, he's it's just like this young man who had so much. And it, that just for some reason, I mean, obvious obvious reasons. Anyway, George, um, yes. and I know you know you lost your mother when you were fifteen, and I know she was a big supporter of yours. And again, to you, it's like you know what what was I mean? You were young, you were a kid, you know, and yeah, she. Was, it- that's good. I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think her, her mother, my grandmother, was a, a big, a big influence in my life. So um, she was the first lawyer in Arkansas, and uh, just a matriarch. She was like Auntie Mame, and she was sort of, sort of the, the hero in my life. And 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 also one of the other heroes is uh, this is going to sound strange. Uh, I uh, I was raised in the South. I was raised in Arkansas and there was a, a African-American man, black man who lived with us, who was our, basically my mother. My mother was a, a, a terrible alcoholic and all the rest of it. So he lived with us. He raised my mother's family and he was with us. And he, I considered him practically my father. My father was very, uh, 
always at work and sort of distant. So Levi was his name and I, he was my hero. And I still think about him to this day. Greatest, That's awesome. greatest, greatest man. That's amazing. Um, so, uh, yeah. So he was my mother and father figure in many respects. Yeah. You and know what? Remember. It sounds so cliche, but don't you really believe that? You know, I, I try to practice what I preach and I'm not a doctor, but like, you know, on this show, it's like, you know, when you do have loss, you know, some, you know, people go really low and they start to drink or they start to do drugs and they start to, and they just can't deal with it. And it really, I know it sounds kind of surfaced, but if you think about like, is this what they'd want you to do? Like, is this how you're like, you know, uh, you're dealing with it there, you know, this happens. So don't you want to live the best life you can maybe for them? Or maybe, I mean, I think there's some truth to that. It's like, I want to make my grandmother's uh, grandfather smile up in the heavens. I want to say, Hey, I'm doing this all for you. You are here. You're the reason I'm here. You're the reason I'm doing it. And without you, I wouldn't have been able to do it. And so I I believe that. Yeah. So in so many ways. Yeah. And and also, you know, I, I, I I believe that more we co-create with God and my my relationship with God for me is very important. And I, I feel like the more I can get in tune with what, what the bigger picture is, the happier I am. You know what I mean? That that's always, I, I'm always better when I'm, I'm, when I just let go of this and yeah, go with, I, I go say with whatever yeah. makes you happy, whatever works for you, you do. And everyone should respect that and love that. Whether, yeah, yeah. Sure. you know, whether yeah. it's spiritual, whether it's God, whether whatever it is, that's why I mean, yeah, sure. we wouldn't have fucking wars. If people could just I say, know. Hey, I love that. Love that. Don't just, don't tell me what to do. No, do no, believe I, what exactly. you want to believe. No, what? I, I get it. I get it. Well, yeah. I know, but, I, I, but by the way, God's distant, yeah. but I believe in God too. Also just so, so you astonishing know, about this conversation is like everyone has their sorrow and everyone has their story. And yeah. You never know when you walk into these rooms what somebody's story is. Oh, and, you know, yeah. we, we think everybody else has their shit together and we think everybody else has so much confidence and look at them and aren't they fabulous? They're fabulous and talented and they've got it all together. Meanwhile, he just lost his wife. She just lost her mother. Right. Um, she's been battling depression. You know, we don't know. Exactly. What people are carrying around and right. everyone's right. carrying around something. So Susan, right. who's they your hero? Are. You know, I don't, it's nothing like, it's not like, oh, it's, you know, Michelle Obama. It's nothing's jumping out, except there are some people that I've met through Twitter that are fighting the good fight. You know, it's one thing to like puff, puff, you know, tweet something as Wonder Woman and come off as brave and get like, you know, a hundred people to think it's fabulous. But there are people like Shannon Watts who, you know, started this um, campaign against the NRA and to work for gun control and she gets death threats and she, you know, there are just so many people who are on the front lines of whatever their cause is and they're unafraid and unapologetic and they're speaking their truth to the to power. And I have so much respect for that. Absolutely. Somebody like Shannon, somebody like these, you know, the politicians or the, or people in the private sector who are trying to get shit done or trying to change our climate or, you know, make our lives better, but aren't just talking about it or tweeting about it, doing it, out yeah. there doing it. And I have such respect for that. I love such that. Respect Phil. That. See, I say don't heroes. you start singing. We don't need another hero. Phil, who's your hero? <laughs> we don't need another hero. What if we did a yeah, musical well. with all our voices, like all our characters? What <laughs> we don't, we don't need another. We don't need another. Um, <laughs> Sydney Poitier and my mother. Beautiful. Both people who overcame obstacles to, you know, achieve great, like my mother was the first person in her family, also from Arkansas, George. Really? Um, wow. Uh, seventh of eight kids, mm. first one to go to college. First one in the entire family history to wow. go to college. Wow. And not only that, but then provided the ability for me to go to college. Right. I love and Sidney Poitier, just you know, as someone just who also who worked on a personal level, but on a symbolic level as well. You know, right. think about the adversity. We can't even imagine. Well, right? I can't even imagine. I can't. You imagine. guys can imagine. Carl can imagine. Can imagine. Phil can imagine yeah. more than I can imagine. Not me. I'm the I'm the privileged one. I really am. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. It's like, <laughs> but but that's the thing to accomplish what he accomplished when yeah. he accomplished it. Yeah. Those people on the front lines for all those years. Talk about bravery. Yeah. Uh, Mar- uh, Maria. Maria. Who's your hero? Maria. So when you said personal hero, that I think of people that I want to be like. 
that I admire their character and their actions. And the person I look up to as a person of faith, as a Christian is Jesus. And that's who I want to be like. That's who I call on to renew me, change me, uh, save me. So I think of him as number one. Uh, and then people that I know personally in the flesh, uh, I think about, um, people whose capacity to love to me, that's, always something I'm in awe of, that they love in spite of so many reasons not to love. Uh, I think that's really the goal. And I think about um, my husband because he, I admire his capacity to love, his compassion, his patience. And, and even though we argue and I don't like some things, I, I like so much about him and I want to be like him Aww. in so many ways. Um, that's awesome. You know, as I've matured, I'm able to actually look at very flawed people that I have focused on the negatives about and actually admire them like my mother, uh, mm -hmm. who I was able to really mourn years after her death because I, I focused on all the frustrations I had. I focused also on why wasn't I even better for her? And my husband says, you were, you were, I can tell you as an outsider, you were, you did a, 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 a the best you can and you did a lot, but you know, I think I should have done more, especially as a person of faith. I should have been able to love even more. I should have been able to uh, forgive immediately sooner and, and, and take even more crap. But um, <laughs> I realized that, that I'm limited. I'm limited in my own flesh. And I was actually, the best I, I could be at the time. And it was pretty good coming from somebody else's opinion that I, I respect, like my husband. I love that. I have, you know, I feel like I think about, you know, I definitely think of my grandfather, just unconditional love. I remember him handwriting letters to me all the time, just saying, Mike, I just, I'm so proud of you. We've always been proud of you before anything ever happened. You know that we love you. We only want to see you do well. We, we, you know, it's just, we love enjoy that you enjoy us so much. We're grandparents. Most people don't really give a shit about us. <laughs> You've always loved us and called us every. And so I always think of him um, and my grandmother, Ruthie.